Hello. How are you doing? Oh, okay. Good to go. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Emmaus Borough Council meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, we'll have public appeals. If you have a public appeal, please approach the podium and sign in. Hearing none, community minute. Does anyone have anything to bring forward? I'll uh, just mention that we had a, uh, an event for the first responders uh, at Fire Company Number 1. Uh, some awards and recognition was given out and some citations. It was really nice to see um, what our... our uh, uh, fire department and ambulance corps is doing in the in the community, so that was nice, nice to see that. Fun uh, dancing too. And fun dancing. <laughs> Must be that Friday. And then uh, there's no special presentation. Reading of the minutes. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve the council meeting minutes for February 18th? Councilman Hart, seconded by Councilwoman McManaman. Any discussion on the? Minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. We have no decisions on bids. We received one communication from Kathy Mincer from the Recreation and Entertainment Commission. Uh, we got the 41st Summer Concert Series. We got the Faith in the Park. We got Movie Nights. We got Tunes at Twilight and a cruise, the Cruise in Car Show. And that's all going to get referred to Parks and Rec Committee, and they will discuss all those items. Anyone else have a communication to bring forward? Hearing none, Bur Borough Engineers report. We have none. Solicitors report. I have none denied. Thank you. Thank you. Unfinished business part one, new business. Unfinished business part two, we have nothing. <coughs> Does anybody have anything to bring forward on items that are not on the agenda? Hearing none, Mayor's report. I have nothing to report. Might Promise. be a record for getting to you. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> committee reports, Public Works Committee, Chairman Anders. Uh, nothing for official action. We meet the 11th here in Borough Chambers, and I'll report progress. Thank you. Health, Sanitation, and Codes Committee, <laughs> Chairman Balliot. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, tonight, I guess we're going to have uh, a few things we're going to meet with. I guess Wes has a presentation for us. We're going to go. He's asking for approval of some uh, conditional approvals for his uh, his projects he's got going on. So I guess with, with that. Yes, yeah, so, um, so I, I think normally uh, we'll ask the uh, developer to present first. Um, and if you, could, if you could bring your drawings up close, uh, we'd appreciate it. Then I, I think what we'll do, because of the size of the, the, the resolution, uh, I think we'll ask the borough engineer to explain the conditions and the process uh, and why there are so many. Um, I, I think that'll help clarify some of the questions that, that most of you have on it. Uh, and if the solicitor has comments, we'll ask him too, and then, then we'll get into whether or not you, you want to approve it tonight. Te technically, a conditional use is a permitted use subject to conditions that are in the zoning ordinance. We are sitting, it's like the same thing as a special exception in front of the zoning hearing board. Uh, since it's a technically a hearing, I, I should just ask, is there anyone who re wishes to be recognized as a party or a party in interest other than the applicant in this matter? So you're looking at the one gentleman that's sitting there. I'm himself. looking at the one gentleman, yes. <laughs> Unless somebody from the press wants to be recognized. No, okay. Uh, just so the record can indicate, no, there was no response. Does that mean you're ready for me? Sure. All right. Well, it's kind of unusual to be on this side of uh, things. I, to a degree, I wish I was sitting over there, but at the same time, it's been kind of nice. Uh, but... Let me first start by saying congratulations to all of Borough Council for continuing to create an environment uh, where residents and businesses want to be. Uh, obviously, a great borough government, commissions, and departments all deserve credit. 
The amount of investment going on in Emmaus over the next two to three years is substantial and arguably as much as we have seen since the late 70s or early 80s. It's easily in excess of 50 million, but probably closer to 60 million. If you look at some of the commercial projects, you have Wawa, uh, Turkey Hill, uh, the old Emmaus Auto Parts building, which if you haven't been in there is beautiful. Uh, there's some upcoming projects on Chestnut Street. And then from a residential standpoint, you have the fields at Indian Creek, which homes are selling for in the $500,000 range, which is notable. Uh, you have Phoebe redeveloping the old Rodale building. Uh, there are townhomes going in on Arch Street. And then obviously you have the apartments that are likely going to be built on the property near South 4th Street and our property. Uh, that is a lot of investment in the community. If I think about the 13 years that I was on here, that probably, uh, if you added all of it up in that entire time, didn't even get, get close to that. So we have a great environment here. People want to be here. Uh, and if for, in comparison, if you look at over the last 50 years, uh, these are some of the major projects. So from 1958 to 1978, pretty much all of Little Lehigh Acres was built. Uh, Colonial Crest, 1978, Weiss, 1981, uh, the, the Meadows, 1992 to 1993, Powder Mills between 1975 and 1980, uh, the storage units uh, between, on Bank Street between 5th and 6th, 1986, McDonald's, 1978, uh, the Rodale building, on, or the old Rodale building on 10th Street was 1990, uh, and obviously all of the schools were also updated in the 1990s. So again, we, we had a big drought of nothing going on. Uh, and now suddenly we're, we're here with lots, lots going on. Um, but with all growth, uh, there's some concern that always comes with that. But if you look at it statistically, the growth we are seeing is extremely positive overall. Uh, it's all in an urban core with considerably little to no new infrastructure requirements, and many of the projects are bringing new residents, which is what Emmaus needs. As a borough council person, I talked about this many times over the years about the benefit of adding maybe 1,000, 1,500 people, no exact number, but adding some population, uh, and the benefits that go with that. Uh, there are a lot of positives uh, for the town and the businesses, and the biggest one is for the budget. The more people we have, the better that will be, especially because they're not creating new expenses. Uh, but for our project, uh, we're calling it Parkside at North Street, and we consider it um, a neighborhood beautification project. The building that's been there has been there for a long time. A lot of us have just kind of accepted it for what it is. Uh, but that's a residential neighborhood, and taking a pseudo-commercial building out of there uh, is going to be a plus. And it's going to be filled with homes. Uh, there were a lot of options there. We could have filled it with many more homes than what we're pr proposing. Uh, we also could have made it apartments. Uh, could have easily been 50 plus apartments. Uh, we decided against that as we felt that homes would be uh, the best use for that piece of land. Uh, to get into the technicals, I'm going to turn it over to our consultant, Kevin, and he'll explain the technical details. Thanks. Good evening, Kevin Frook from Cornerstone Consulting. How are you? Um, the project before you is the old Rodale Press, as Wes mentioned. Uh, it's bounded by North Street, North 6th Street, and Long Street. Uh, we're proposing that the existing building and parking be torn down, and that's to be replaced with 23 building lots, and that will consist of 22 townhouse units in blocks of three or four, and one apartment building, which will be a four unit. Every unit has a garage uh, and a driveway, so there's, there's parking for everything. Uh, as part of the project, Long Street is proposed to be widened, so currently it's an alley width, so it's 14 feet wide, plus or minus now. It's to be expanded to at least 20 feet wide. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we're looking at all new curb and sidewalk around the main block of North, North 6th and, and Long Street. And that'll have the residential curb and then the grass strip and then the sidewalk. So it'll have that uniform look. Um, the building, as you can notice on the plan, the buildings are shown as blocks. Um, they're not going to be built as actual blocks. Those are the actual building envelopes so that an actual architectural unit can be placed inside of that. So with the stormwater management and everything that, that we're dealing with, that allows for that additional impervious uh, to be planned for. Uh, in addition, and, and on top of that, we're planning between four and 500 uh, square foot of additional impervious uh, per lot for a patio or something like that in the future uh, should the homeowner pursue that. Um, one thing that uh, I'm sure Brad will go over, uh, we are required to get an NPDES permit, uh, and that is through the Conservation District and DEP, and that deals a lot with stormwater management. So 
uh, we're really trying to get the, these approvals squared away now so that we can then submit to them um, because they like to see finalized plans before it goes in, even though that's a lengthy process at this point. Uh, as far as the, the, the plan goes as well, there were several waivers uh, that I can go over. I have extra copies of that letter if you need those, but um, I can go over those. And then also uh, we did go to the Planning Commission uh, several times and went over several of the planning items for the project. And uh, as Brad will tell you, the, the letter really boils down to a lot of uh, drafting and, and some follow-up items and then uh, a lot of repeat comment on the necessary uh, planning module and NPDES permit uh, approvals, which are outside agency approvals. So if you'd like, I can go through the, the waivers, uh, or do you want to take those separately or, or with, or does everyone understand what, what they are? <coughs> Suggestion? Um, so I, I think there are a number of questions on this, and uh, we don't have a killer agenda here. So I, I would say let's let's go through this so, okay. so that council fully understands what, <coughs> um, what they're looking at here. Does everyone have a copy of the waiver letter, or does anyone want an extra copy? So in your packet, it would be, um, is it the handover engineering letter? No, it is a letter from us that's dated January 9th. Uh, uh, no, if, if, if you have a copy... Um, we do not have that. Thank you, sir. Okay, going through that, uh, we are requesting a waiver from section 22-304-3A1 uh, regarding uh, the procedure for, for final plan. We're asking for a preliminary final plan approval, which I believe is customary for uh, the township. Uh, section 22-5042, general design uh, principles for right-of-way width. Um, there are several items underneath this one. Uh, for North 6th Street, we're requesting a waiver for the cartway width. Uh, 33 feet is uh, required, and we're proposing for it to remain unchanged. I believe it's about 30 or 31 feet currently. Uh, the next one is a waiver um, for the proposed upgrade of Long Street. Uh, so the street is currently provided with a, a designed 20-foot right-of-way width, or I'm sorry, a 20-foot right-of-way width and a 14-foot cartway width. The proposed design uh, is for a 25-foot half width on the north side of Long Street. So there is a 50-foot minimum right-of-way width typically. So it's 25-foot on the north side because we, we control that entire strip um, and to remain on the south side for the right-of-way and a 20-foot um, wide cartway width. And um, I believe that we're also looking at, um, and, and that, those are items that are discussed at planning, and we can discuss those more this evening if you'd like. Uh, we're also looking at section 22-403.1 as far as plan requirements and final plan, uh, requesting for uh, permission to use a 24 by 36 inch plan sheet, which is a larger plan sheet. And I believe that's also customary that you're seeing that more and more. And section 22403.33a, um, and this is for uh, to provide a scale at 20 feet due to density of the improvements rather than uh, a 50 scale drawing uh, that's in the ordinance. So those are the waivers. Um, again, the, the, the primary one is, is Long Street and asking for a waiver of a 20 foot wide cartway and a 37.7 foot wide right of way. Um, and, and, you know, the planning commission went through these, they recommended approval of those. And if anyone has any questions, um, certainly happy to answer that once the train goes by. Does anyone from council have a question? I do just want to make a comment on the cartway on Long Street. Um, that, that, um, 
I was adamant and borough staff was adamant that we do not want a 34 foot wide cartway that narrows down into 14 feet uh, literally the next property past past mm -hmm. this development that makes absolutely zero sense um, a 20 foot cartway is exactly what the fire apparatus needs and, and that's required um, and it's still from there it's still going to narrow from 20 feet down to 14 feet so it's still not going to be necessarily congruent but um, 20 feet is what we need for fire apparatus so that's why uh, the 20 foot cartway was was what we had had decided at, at the planning level and, and long street so everyone's aware is this is lower street it's pretty it, w what you would think is an alley back there we don't have alleys right <coughs> you're right i said it instead of leanne we don't have alleys so uh, at this point, Brad, would you want to make any comments at all? Um, with regard to the waivers, uh, the, the planning commission did review. Um, can we? I'm sorry. Can somebody bring the microphone up, please? There's a sorry, stand sorry there and a mic. Right it's not connected. Yeah. And you'll probably have to bring it a little closer, Brad. Right. Thank you. Uh, with regard to the uh, letter requesting the waivers, uh, the Planning Commission did review that extensively. Um, we did go uh, back and forth in a, a good amount of discussion with regard to the uh, Long Street questions in particular. And as Shane indicated, um, the final geometry that was presented represents the uh, what is felt to be the best compromise uh, between improving to street standards and fitting into the neighborhood while still maintaining uh, an appropriate size to accommodate the emergency vehicles should they need to, uh, to access the, the, uh, the development through Long Street. Uh, the other waiver requests are relatively minor. Uh, we're seeing quite a few plans that need to be 24 by 36. This one in particular, as, uh, uh, as Kevin mentioned, uh, specifically needs to have a scale to present the improvements uh, that's just not consistent with the ordinance requirements, but is a standard engineering practice. Um, and uh, the combination into a preliminary and final just allows the developer and the designers to work on all of the details and all of the factors associated with the planning. In one one process, and, and uh, so there really, other than uh, Long Street, there's nothing of substance, and that one was was uh, the subject of a great deal of conversation, and ultimately the okay. final uh, agreement at planning uh, to the geometry before you. Well, I actually read through all 22 pages, and some of it I got, some of it I didn't get, and. This made it a lot more simpler. No, that so that's just the waivers. Right. That's not that's but, not the rest of it. But there was like yeah. with the trees and all that stuff. But that's when, all conditions. When, when do we get to that? Yeah. So so those are all those are all conditions, and that's what the resolution was built off of. And I, and I think Brad can can go through some. So of the that waivers, I I don't think anyone on council, I, at least I from what I can tell, because there's no questions. I don't think there's any issues here. But the conditions that you're mentioning now. I just there's have one question. Is it still two-way traffic then? Yes. And are you paving it all the way down to Perkyo, North Perky Omen or? No, to the end of the property. To the end of the property. That's where the improvement is. Okay, so when do we address the conditions? Right now. And that, will Brad do that first? All right, Brad, so if you could just go over the conditions then, please. Um, you should have before you a resolution prepared by the solicitor's office uh, with a number of conditions beginning at the bottom of the first page, uh, continuing through page two and page three, uh, the signatures uh, on page four. Uh, it's, it's a long list, uh, but as Kevin indicated, uh, much of it has to do with uh, plan presentation uh, some drafting corrections on a number of items uh, that need to be done to make uh, information shown on the plans consistent from plan to plan, 
as they went quickly through the various revisions to get back onto planning agendas. One plan got changed and another plan in the set maybe didn't get those same changes done. So we are looking for consistency throughout uh, the set of drawings so there's fewer potential questions that would come up during construction. Um, the, the two real uh, key items of uh, outside approvals have been mentioned, uh, specifically the sewage facilities planning, uh, which is a process that they have um, begun collecting the data uh, putting the documentation together uh, that has to be approved by the borough and the Lea Valley Planning Commission compiled for the borough to then approve at the council table before it gets submitted to DEP. DEP is the ultimate outside agency that would review that package and those are typically done uh, after the fact once the full geometry of the development is, is complete and relatively locked in. Uh, similarly, uh, the Lehigh County Conservation District, acting on behalf of the DEP, uh, reviews the plans for stormwater management and uh, construction erosion control. Whenever a project is over an acre of disturbance, uh, they also review and do the preliminary uh, issuance of the NPDES stormwater permit for the project. Uh, that process has been started. Uh, the designers have had a pre-app uh, meeting, so-called, uh, at the Conservation District, now a standard step in the process. Uh, that meeting has taken place so that the formal package uh, for that permit can be assembled, reviewed by the district, and then uh, ultimately submitted to DEP Wilkes-Barre for the final approval. Uh, so that uh, has to be handled outside of, of the borough's direct control. Um, items that are of, of interest for uh, borough uh, oversight, uh, there's uh, a very uh, significant amount of stormwater management facilities proposed on the site. Uh, admirably, um, for the size of the development, the, uh, the designers are doing quite a bit to try to locally collect stormwater runoff from the roofs and, and yard areas and uh, keep it from having to flow over the sidewalks and into the gutters to get to the stormwater management system that's already in place in the borough. Um, so there's quite a few inlets in the yards and pipes connecting them ultimately to the existing drainage system in 6th Street. Um, there has to be a um, post-construction management plan that addresses how everything associated with the site uh, restabilization, the lawns, landscaping, etc., and the underground stormwater improvements are managed, operated, and maintained and repaired if necessary. That um, the borough ordinances have a what I call a boilerplate template uh, for the agreement, but an agreement that's site-specific with the improvements that are proposed, identified, and specifically uh, part of the plan. Um, that still has to be prepared, uh, similar to a developer's improvements agreement, which uh, you're probably familiar with, where the, the plan represents the improvements. There's a legal agreement prepared uh, for the, uh, the council to approve. The, identifies the developer's responsibilities to construct. That has to be done. Uh, the PCSM, as it's called, picks it up basically after the construction is done and it's conveyed to the ultimate buyers and they then uh, have their own share of responsibility. So those, those are two different, uh, very detailed uh, agreements that, that have to be prepared and obviously are conditions uh, uh, for approval. Um, as I said, besides those, uh, the, the laundry list, if you will, of, of comments from our letter, uh, as I said, really represents consistency between drawings, correcting some errors and numbers. Uh, there's a lot of easements, and we went through and checked the easement descriptions on the various lots, and some of the lengths on different segments of the easements need to be corrected. 
get it right the first time, that happens. Um, depicting small dimensions like cartway widths and right of way widths and, and dimensions where they are proposing dedicating little slivers of right of way in order to have the streets meet the borough's right of way requirements. Those just need to be identified throughout the plan set. Um, so, although there are a lot of, of items, there aren't as, as many items that really require anything. And, and specifically, the items uh, will not change anything with regard to the layout of the plan with uh, the dedication or the limits of the rights of way and cartway for the waiver request. It's all just at getting things consistent. Um, additionally, uh, the solicitor's office took a look at the plans and took a look at the deeds for the property. The property uh, was held in multiple individual deeds by the Rodale organization, acquired then uh, by Wesley. Um, the solicitor recommends the process of consolidating the multiple lots before the subdivision. So in other words, taking the multiple parcels, eliminating the intervening lot lines to make it a common single property, and then dividing it to make up the lots. And they've gotten enough information to do that, it's just that it's a little bit confusing and it doesn't fully pull the pieces together to make those two steps were to include that intermediate step of consolidating the property before dividing it. Um, if you don't, a number of the lots essentially become conveyed from multiple underlying parcels from the old deeds, and it's cleaner if they can be conveyed from a single, uh, single form of ownership holding on the property. So that was something that the solicitor's office felt should be added and is included in, uh, in the list. We don't object to that. It can be done the other way, but it, it leaves a lot of room for errors and omissions in the process of writing the deeds for the individual lots to, to convey them. It's a lot cleaner to do it the way Tom had, had suggested that it be done. Uh, additionally, there, there's a condition with regard to um, recreation, uh, I believe. That one provides for uh, contribution towards recreation uses in the borough. Uh, Shane or Wesley may want to uh, report more on, on that. Yeah. Uh, but customarily in a residential development, either land is to be dedicated to the borough for public open space and recreation purposes or a cash contribution in lieu of or other contributions of similar value. Sure, uh, I'll comment on it. Um, <clears throat> one of our practices with some of these larger developments has been, don't give us the cash because we're just going to throw it in the general fund. That's what we've always done, uh, and what we're seeing is we're not we haven't earmarked it in in decades to actually go into the parks. So what we've done is we've asked each of the developers that, that have to contribute the money. I mean, it's per ordinance uh, that they dedicate it to the nearest park. Um, or they give us that equivalent amount of work of doing it in the doing the work themselves in the park because that way we're not dealing with when we do the work the state wages et cetera et cetera et cetera so um, so Mr. Barrett uh, had actually I mean being a former council member he was on board with this from uh, from the beginning so uh, there's a condition in in their uh, agreement that states that. Uh, their, what, what the equivalent of their contribution towards recreation would be will go towards uh, addressing the nearest park, which will fit right into our comprehensive park and recreation plan of addressing the desperate needs that we have in, in each of our parks. So uh, if all three of these residential development projects uh, go through and are, are constructed, you will see improvements at Arch Street Park, you'll see improvements over at Lions Playground, and you will see improvements at Fourth Street. Um, so uh, those are, are check boxes that we, we need for the community. Uh, and you know, by ordinance, they have to dedicate, what, $1,000 per unit. Um, so it's a sizable amount of money that each of those developments 
uh, would be putting into recreation rather than it goes in the general fund and nobody knows where it ends up being. Thank you. Now, I do have a couple, couple questions if, if you're finished. Um, the first thing I think council wants to know is, um, <clears throat> I mean, I know this answer, but if you could enlighten uh, council, uh, there are a lot of conditions here. There's a lot that they need to do. Um, how does council know that all these things get addressed in the plans um, before everything's recorded? So can you kind of take them through the process of final approvals and, and what happens? Sure. Um, if the council approves the plan based on the resolution and the conditions that are included, um, the borough staff and our office acting as the engineer uh, for this, uh, the borough engineer for this project uh, will use the resolution and the underlying review letters from our office and the zoning office essentially has a checklist that each and every one of the items that's identified must be satisfied prior to the borough staff authorizing the additional copies to be generated and provided for the final signatures. Um, this is a process uh, that we've been through um, at varying levels many, many times. Very few plans don't have some form of condition. This one has quite a few, but uh, essentially, unless one of the outside agencies requires a change that we're not anticipating, none of the items that are conditions in the letter would require making any change to the material layout of the development. Uh, but each and every one of them requires something to be changed on the plan and checked in the process. That's what Shane, John, Jim, Tom, and our office do using the resolution and the underlying letters as the checklist. So uh, we're, we're quite familiar with the process. Uh, there's checks and balances all the way around. Um, usually the plans are uh, handled um, electronically at that point in time, but ultimately paper copies you know, are the final documents. Uh, so we go through the process as the designers move forward. And uh, of course, on the outside agency reviews, we wait for the formal correspondence from DEP and the County Conservation District for those approvals. And uh, the plans do not get reproduced and uh, laid out on the counter in the office downstairs for signatures until the entire executive staff, solicitor, and our office are satisfied that all of the items have been dealt with as requested. If for some reason the designers on behalf of the developer have to make a material change, if the staff feels that it's a change that's um, large enough to warrant the planning commission to reconsider the plan or for council to reconsider the plan, we would bring it forward and require them to come back. But uh, as I said, unless there is some surprise uh, requirement from an outside agency, uh, we don't see uh, that the comments uh, will require any changes that are materially different from what the Planning Commission is recommending and what you all would be approving uh, based on the resolution. Thank you. And, and just so you know, we do have a project that, that has been uh, approved previously that is going back to planning for, for material changes, as, as Brad had pointed out. The next question is for Kevin. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of technical things on here. Can you give us a, um, and I know it's, it's a ballpark, um, but a projected timeline from if council approves this tonight to a time where we would see probably final approvals, final plans, and a timeline of when does the monstrosity get knocked down? The, um, so uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of the cleanup items are uh, mostly already done. Uh, you'll notice with the letter, because the ordinance have it written in there in several locations, you've got like planning module mentioned six, seven times in conditions. The stormwater mentioned six, seven times at outside agency. So there's a lot of repeat. So there's really, as Brad was saying, not, not a whole lot. So from a plan standpoint, we're probably looking at being done in a week or two. But the, the planning module and MPS process is a six-month process. And they've, they've now just recently changed their policies 
that uh, they essentially want to have plans that aren't going to change from a municipal level submitted so that they can go through and process those. So it, it's kind of become more uh, imperative to kind of make sure everyone from a, from a municipal standpoint is on the same page. And then again, if, if something changes, as Brad has mentioned, then we do have to come back and deal with that. But uh, we've had a pre-application meeting with them. Uh, they're, they're happy with uh, the project because we're, we're reducing the impervious coverage uh, significantly from what's out there, even with the added impervious that we're allotting to each of the, the, the different parcels. So um, again, from a stormwater management standpoint, uh, as Brad said, really there's a lot of stormwater facilities, if you will, but that's really just inlets and pipes, the things you see in your street. We're not talking stormwater basins or anything of that nature. It's just conveyance. So again, that's a you know, six-month process, same with planning module. Uh, just by the time you've submitted to the different people, they send it back to you, and then borough council you know, deals with that at a, at a meeting, and then it gets shipped off to DEP, and they take their, their good time with it. So demolition and construction time frame? We're hoping, yeah, uh, so that would be August, September. Thank you. Um, Brad, I know you covered this, but um, <coughs> and you mentioned agreements and, and such, but uh, as far as the storm, stormwater management on the properties, who will be responsible for maintaining that, or is that to be, to be decided down the road? As the developer has currently presented, it's my understanding that the owner of each lot that has any stormwater facilities located on that lot would be responsible for those facilities. So let me give you a scenario. Somebody has uh, a drainage on their property and it gets clogged up and it goes over to their neighbors. Who will be responsible for enforcing that, and, and what, are the, what are the ways of, of enforcing that? Well, I think the, the first line of defense, essentially, is communication between the neighboring property owners, obviously. Um, if a property owner has a catch basin or an inlet in the yard area on their lot, not every lot has one, but if a particular property owner has one, it essentially is their responsibility to keep the uh, top of the, the box clear, uh, keep leaves and grass, uh, grass clipping accumulations from clogging the inlet so that the water does not pond and have to find its way to the next one along the swale system between the inlets. Um, if a property owner does not do that, uh, as I said, Neighboring property owners can communicate, or they could come to the borough and, and ask the borough to pursue notifying the property owner that they're not meeting their responsibilities that are part of the post-construction management plan. So let me ask the solicitor: Do we have do we have enforcement over that yep. since it's on the private pri private property, or is that something that's a civil matter? No, well, it is a civil matter, but you do have enforcement uh, rights under the MPC, uh, and not only that, we're it. In these type of situations, I like to see the, that condition put into the deed so that the people don't come back and say, I didn't know about that. Oh, my God, i got to do this. Yeah. No, I, I like to see those I in the deed. Our there, borough staff. Be, yeah, there will be two types of notification. One is it's through the borough, obviously, but the other one is it's recorded. The PCSM plans are also recorded. So there's, it's not just on the, on, the, on the record plan that this will be a condition. It's also on the PCSM plan. So there's, there's two, essentially, forms that they're going to need to sign that tell them that they have to know that, that they're responsible yeah. for. So our borough staff was, was very adamant about identifying that, you know, read on the deeds, the, the, the pipe that's behind your property is owned by you. Because one of the problems that we have in the borough are these, are these homes where they share a pipe uh, and then something happens and now you're fighting over whose problem it is. and, and and, and what, what, who's going to be responsible for it, and it turns into a great big conundrum. Like, so, I go by self, uh, forestry. Exa exactly. So uh, what, we, what we said to the developer was, we really want, if it's behind your house, it's your problem. And if it's on the side of your house because you have a corner lot, first of all, your corner lot is probably more valuable than the inner properties, but you get the responsibility of 
what's on that corner. Okay. Um, that's that's the trade off that you get for having the corner property. Is you also get the problem that goes with with um, with it. So. Uh, we were very we were very adamant uh, downstairs of making sure that we know clearly who owns what there. And if there's a blockage, as you were asking, if there's a blockage behind one of the properties, you can find that with a camera. You you run that you run that camera up through. You see, I had 147 feet. You can tell exactly where that is. You can tell whose property that is. It's okay. it's their responsibility. Um, we run those cameras all the time. That was was brought up uh, during the planning and was revised on the plan prior to the Planning Commission's last review and, and their recommendation for approval. Um, the original layout followed conventional thinking and placed the inlets more or less at lot lines or lot corners and the pipes ran down the common lot line. Um, the pipes and inlets were adjusted in the final layout so that they very clearly fall on a particular lot, not on the line between two lots. They're shifted so that they're on one side or the other of the line. The easements generally follow and, and overlap the back of two adjacent properties, but the pipe itself is on the one. There's more of an easement on that side of the line than the other, but we typically require a 20-foot wide easement. It's just centered on the pipe, which is no longer centered on the, the lot line, but very specifically placed on a single lot as it, as it traverses uh, through the, the development. So that way you at least have the ability to identify the ownership of any particular structure or reach of the pipe lengths. There's no question, well, this half is the neighbor's pipe and this half is my pipe. All right. Does anybody else from council have a question? Just, just a general for less um, Did I hear you say one, one of the buildings would be an apartment? Correct. Are you keeping those, or are those being sold? And it's not likely to be myself. Pardon? It'll almost with certainty remain with you. Yeah. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. Mr. President, could I correct one thing? I had initially said this was a conditional use. This is a permitted use subject to uh, uh, conditions and waivers. So it is uh, allowed what they're doing. I think the most important issue is this last issue involving the care and maintenance of the uh, sewer lines, um, almost all the other items are deferred items that are deferred to outside agencies to come up with the plans. The rest of, most of the other conditions are pretty straightforward and uh, technical corrections. So I think you've hit on the big issue. Okay. Anybody else have a question, comments? All right. Um, I, Mr. Yelsey, do you have... I just wanted to, to clarify following Mr. Andrews' question. The, um, the large block of the property uh, bounded by 6th Street, North Street, and Long Street is the area that would be the townhomes. Mm -hmm. And then the single rectangular lot on the south side of Long uh, between 6th and Moyer is the apartment building. If anyone was confused, as to where the two different types of occupancies would be. The apartments are located just in the one building on the one lot that would be south of uh, Long Street, east of North, and then the balance of the property is all the town homes. Just in case there was any questions. Thank you, that makes sense. Where I'm looking at, I have a map up. And, and thank you. While you were saying that, I thought of one thing that I brought up earlier when we first met with Wes. And I brought up parking. And did you add additional parking then? Um, well, the parking lot across from. So that's still going to be. That is a parking lot. And, yeah, and that, is, that, is, that will remain. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had. Anybody else have anything else? If not, we can bring the resolution forward if you want to read point it. Point out the apartments on, on your schematic there. So if you drive past it, it's, there's a sliver of land. Again, the, the, the property down here, when you're, like the fire station is right up right. here. Oh, right. Here, sorry. Uh, and when you're coming in, this is currently a parking lot. There's a, there's a blue Got apartment it. next to it. Got it. And then there's another apartment next to it, another apartment next to it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, um, Councilman Balliot, if you want to read the resolution, 2020-10.
the whole thing. <laughs> just, the, just the title the, at the top. The title will do. <laughs> I thought you were serious. <laughs> <laughs> you had me. <laughs> That's a rookie mistake. Uh, the resolution uh, conditionally approving the uh, preliminary and final land development plan for Wesley Lorks property, Parkside at North Street. Uh, place that in the form of a motion? Yeah, I'd like to place that in a... Uh, in a form of a motion. There's a motion by Councilman Bally, a second by Councilman Hart. Any questions or discussion? I just want to say I'll, I'll be abstaining as I have um, done work over the years for um, Wes. And then uh, just another point of interest, my great-grandparents that lived across from Dino's restaurant, which is now Turk, um, Rita's, um, they used to walk they both worked in that building, and they used to walk there and, and work there and then walk back home. So I just found that out within the last year from my, my aunt. So my, my great-grandparents worked in that building. So with that being said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Those abstaining? It's myself, so it's six ayes, one abstention. Uh, this is a resolution that I think all of you need to sign tonight. All right, and I'll need one of these. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Best of luck. Good luck with the plan. Can't wait to see it. Brad, thank you. Thank you, Brad. You're welcome. No Monday night football to go to, but you know, bigger and watch free election stuff. Still under health sanitation and oh. still under health sanitation and codes committee. Uh, so we had a we had a great meeting. Uh, I guess uh, a few weeks ago we had uh, uh, our fire chief came out and uh, talked to us about some stuff, which I thought was great. That I think you guys can all see in our in the notes, and you know we'll we'll further work on uh, on that uh, just coming up with a couple other still kind of working on uh, on plugging away on on some goals and just shaping the direction of, of, of what's going to come out of the, the committee and uh, with that I'm going to report progress and our next meeting is going to be March 25th uh, here at 430. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Committee, Chairwoman Baumgartner. Thank you, Mr. President. We have nothing for official action. Um, you will see there in your uh, iPads, Parks, Recreation, Greenways, and Trails Steering Committee meeting notes. We had our first meeting with the Steering Committee for the study that's coming up. We wanted to meet with them before we actually had a consultant mm -hmm. to get their views on what was important to share what our um, proposal was, what our, our idea was for the study. Uh, everybody who attended seemed excited and interested in taking part in our efforts. Um, we will be having some interviews coming up with potential consultants. We're excited about that. Our next meeting is tomorrow, March 3rd. Progress. I have a quick question. Of course you do. Thank you. <laughs> Shane, just real quick, back at the, the, um, the tunes at Twilight, by the um, Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. um, being that there's alcohol there, do we still need to just let that go? I know that you got referred to committee. Okay. That was in communications, right? Y yes. Yeah, he referred it to committee so that we can oh, talk about it tomorrow. It. I'm sorry, I did not hear that. It's okay. We know you were concentrating on the townhome <laughs> project. So. Yes, sir, I was. <laughs> but yeah, we. That's something that needs to be right, discussed yeah, at, I, at the committee meeting. That's what I thought. Yeah. Thank you. Progress? Yes, progress. Public Safety Committee, Chairman Hart. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we do not have a meeting uh, this month, uh, and I have nothing to report. Our next meeting is March 9th at 9.15 a.m. I report progress. Thank you. General Administration Committee, progress. Our next meeting is March 26th here in Council Chambers at 9 a.m. Budget and Finance Committee, Chairman Dufresne. We have one resolution, 2020-9. It's the bill list for Borough Council to authorize payment for the March 2nd, 2020 bill list. The total of the list is 
$341.06, and I place that in the form of a motion. It's a motion by Councilman DeFrane, seconded by Councilman Hart. Questions on the bill list? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Seven ayes. You can see the significant revenue and expense items in there. Uh, there's nothing else to report here. Our next meeting is March 26th at 11 a.m. Uh, in council chambers and report progress. Thank you. Community Relations Planning and Development Committee, Chairwoman McManaman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, nothing for official action this evening. Uh, the committee notes are attached. We are working on several things. Our next meeting is um, March 9th uh, at 4.30, and I report progress. Thank you. Junior council members report. Uh, council, junior councilman Hausman. Seven students participated in a Spanish oral performance competition on Saturday, February 22nd. Uh, four made first place and three made to second place. And this is uh, great, especially for the first time that VHS has been a part of the event. The spring musical is March 17th to March 22nd. And uh, spring sports trials begin today. And uh, SATs, <coughs> sorry, SATs are on March 14th. Thank you. Thank you. Under boards and commissions, you have three sets of meeting minutes. Personal appeals part two? None? <laughs> Borough manager's report. Uh, no, what I have to discuss with you will be an executive session. So uh, uh, if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask, but a report progress. Are we taking any action in the executive session? No. All right. Under president's business, uh, we will be having an executive session to discuss personnel, and we will recess at 7.52. Uh, you want to stay in here? Yes. <laughs>